So how does cutting your dinner prep time in half sound to you? I don't know about you, but the thought of being able to save time during the week sounds pretty appealing to me. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you my batch prepping hacks, as well as walk you through five weeknight dinners that are super easy to make, utilizing those ingredients that I batch prep. Weeknights often being very hectic, maybe coming off work and your kids are starving, you're trying to figure out what to cook. Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I batch on the weekends to help making mealtime throughout the week run so much smoother. If you're new around here, hey, I'm Lindsay with Organized to Save, and I'm here to help you get organized and be more productive with budget-friendly tips, tricks, and digital products. And batch prepping has been the biggest game changer as far as being able to be more productive with my time when it comes to meals. So the first thing that I do after grocery shopping or lately I've been getting the Misfit boxes, which if you're curious about that, I will leave that down in the description box below if you want to check it out for yourself. But I like to wash all of the produce and get it all clean and ready to go for the week. Some of my favorite things to use are my Norwex veggie scrub. This works amazing on your harder produce, so like carrots and potatoes and things like that. Otherwise, I love using my Living Thieves produce and veggie wash and again everything I talk about I'll have linked down in the description. To wash lettuce I love using my salad spinner. I just chop it all up, throw it in there and wash it. It works great because it rinses all the water off as you spin it around and I love having my lettuce prepped at the beginning of the week so that way it's all ready for me throughout the week and I can just eat it for salads for lunch or use it in our meals at dinner time. A great hack for you to store your lettuce properly is to store them in mason jars with a piece of paper towel that will soak up the excess water so that way your lettuce doesn't get as soggy and nasty as quickly. You can also prep salads and store them in mason jars. I did this in the past when I was was working outside the home it worked out great you just layer all of your toppings on the bottom and then the lettuce on top and that won't make the lettuce soggy as well so I love having all of the produce washed and ready to go for the week because honestly it's gonna cut off so much time for you during your week when you're prepping for dinner so for these green beans I knew that I was gonna be making them the next day or two I went ahead and chopped off all the ends of them and then just stored them in a plastic container with some paper towel so that way no moisture gets in them and, and it helps keep them fresh. And one of our favorite ways to prep veggies lately is to just do a big veggie roast. And I love to chop up all the produce, put it in a container, and then that way when I'm ready to cook it, I just pull out the container, add my seasonings, pop it in the oven. Don't forget to save your veggie scraps. I just throw mine in a Ziploc bag, keep it in my freezer, and then I use them to make homemade veggie or chicken stock throughout the year. For the rest of these carrots, I just chopped them up into carrot sticks for us to have with our lunches or snacks throughout the week. And a great way to keep them fresh is to just simply load them up in a mason jar and add a little bit of fresh water to the bottom. But this will help your carrots stay crisp and won't dry out as easily. Okay, this melon container I found at Aldi's last year. I seriously love this container. I will link something similar down below, but it is amazing because it keeps your melon fresh. And you guys, I know I'm showing a small candle up here, but you can store an entire large watermelon in this container. Also think about prepping your meat in advance as well. I'd like to do this with my ground beef if I know I'm going to be planning meals throughout the week that have ground beef. This particular week I actually was only using about half of it for meals and then the other half I went ahead and put in Ziploc bags and tossed them in my freezer. So that way next time I want to have some ground beef is already cooked ready to go I can just warm it up and add my seasonings. Let me know down in the comments below if you have tried batch prepping or even meal prepping in the past and if you're liking these hacks so far, please give this video a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any other videos coming your way. We love doing tacos, but a fun twist on tacos is actually lettuce taco bowls. These were super fun for us. It was something new that we were trying. This lettuce that I got in my Misfit box worked perfectly to make little taco bowls. This was a hit in our house and we will definitely be doing it again. So here are those veggies I was talking about and all I needed to do was add my oil and seasonings, 
pop it in the oven and there you go. Now, I don't know if you've jumped on the Chaffles bandwagon yet. I learned about this from channel Frida Family. I'll have her recipe linked down below that I used, but it's so simple. It's literally just eggs and cheese and it makes little waffle buns. I'm using my little mini waffle iron. I am obsessed with this thing. It's so cute and makes the perfect size for little sandwich buns. But I also like using this waffle iron for when we make waffles. And of course you know that I make extra waffles and pop them in the freezer. Okay, so since I cooked my meat previously this week, all I had to do was warm it up and then add in the Sloppy Joe sauce. All that I do for mine, it's very simple, just a tad bit of brown sugar, mustard, and ketchup, and that's literally it. I've absolutely been loving using these silicone baking mats. It makes it so the veggies do not stick to the tray at all, because I know for me in the past that's been a huge thing. Even if I spray down my pan, the veggies will still stick to the pan. But this meal was so simple, it was mainly just dump and go. These recipes I got from Flav City and I'll have that linked down in the description below. But for this chicken, I just did very simple seasonings, salt, pepper, paprika, and cumin. I first browned them on the stove top and then I popped them in the oven to finish cooking. So here are those green beans and as you can see, they are still in great condition and they're all prepped and ready to go. Now, if you're a green bean fan, you're definitely gonna need to go and check out this recipe. It is by far my favorite way to have green beans lately. And one thing that has made making this recipe so much easier is this citrus squeezer right here. Holy moly, being able to just easily squeeze out the lemon juice has been a game changer. And to finish off this meal, I sliced up the chicken and throw it on a bed of that lettuce that I prepped earlier in the week, and it tasted so good. Pizza night in our house is a staple that we do every single week, but we like to make our own homemade pizza crust. But one thing that I like to switch up is to add seasonings to the dough. So I just threw in some Italian seasoning to here just to add a little extra flavor to it. And lately I've been trying and making these as mini pizzas. One, it cooks the crust a lot better because this is a fairly wet dough. And then two, it allows for us to customize the pizzas with how we want them. On this particular night, I actually doubled the recipe so that way we could have leftovers for the next day for lunch. But I went ahead and made two different kinds of pizza this night. I went ahead and just did traditional pepperoni and made a chicken pizza. Now I actually used the leftover chicken that we had from the night before. So keep in mind that you can reuse and revamp your leftovers. But to finish up this chicken pizza, I added some lettuce that we had got in our Misfit box as well as some balsamic vinegar glaze. And this was amazing. This is probably my new favorite way to do pizza. So we are big breakfast for dinner people around here. It is my husband's absolute favorite type of meal. And for this meal, I normally only use just sweet potatoes, but I had some little fingerling potatoes that needed used up. So I decided to add them into this one as well. But once I had everything chopped up and peeled, I went ahead and popped those into the oven for them to start cooking. And while I was doing that, I had my sausage cooking on the stovetop. Now to grind up the sausage, I love using this kitchen tool right here. This meat masher is amazing. You can use it as a meat masher or potato masher, but it makes cooking the meat so much easier. Again, using that baking mat, how easily these potatoes are just sliding right off of here. And a bonus hack for you, I love to use these to make over easy eggs. Yes, I crack the eggs right on this baking sheet and pop them in the oven and it seriously makes over easy eggs so easy, especially if you do a lot of them at once. We like to add some avocado and cilantro to just finish off the meal. This, I think if I could only pick one meal to have for the rest of my life, this might actually be a top contender. I don't know what it is, but this is probably my favorite breakfast meal ever. 
So now that you have some batching hacks and a couple meals that you can maybe try yourself, if you're looking to figure out how to better plan out your meals, make sure to check out the video on your screen right now to see how meal planning has really saved me so much time every single week and it answers that pesky question, what's for dinner? We'll see you over there. <laughs>